I'm Alex. And I'm Chase. If you thought the pandemic could stop Croft and High from putting on their performance, you're dead wrong. Well, hopefully not dead, just wrong. Yeah, I guess. Anyways, Croft and High is about to put on its first ever theatrical performance just for you. We've included a pool of amazing, incredible, brilliant, show-stopping, totally unique, never the same performers to bring you a never done before show. And when Alex is done listing adjectives, we can get the show started. Well, thanks for ruining my run, Chase. Yeah, no problem. Anyways. Right, so moving on, if you want to donate to Crofton High School's very own Cardinal players, there is a link in the description of this very video where you can give us cash. And it'll be there for the rest of the show, the rest of the day, the rest of the week, the rest of the month, and even the rest of the year. Hey, I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty nifty. And get this, you can donate anywhere from one dollar all the way to a million bucks, which is exactly what you are. Right, but now it's time to play the music, it's time to light the lights, it's time to get things started on the most sensational, inspirational, celebrational, moppitational. This is what we call a Muppet Show! No. This is what we call a hypocrite! <sighs> Fine. Anyways, uh, let's go on with the show? Yes, we shall. Huh. Should we transfer to the virtual world? Good idea. Great. Well, now that we're in the virtual world and in the comfort of our own homes, we can talk about the performances that we're going to see tonight. Kira Tolton has loved musical theater since she saw her first Broadway show, Annie, at the age of five. She was in her first show when she was in fourth grade, and she's been enjoying being in shows ever since, so she is very excited to be participating in this showcase, even if COVID is stopping it from being in person. In this song, she's playing Eponine, who is heartbroken after reading a letter from Marius, who she's in love with, telling Cassette he loves her. We hope you'll find this piece to be incredibly beautiful. When everybody else is sleeping I think of him and then I'm happy with the company I'm keeping The city goes to bed And I can live inside my head On my own Pretending he's beside My way I close my eyes and he has found me In the rain the pavement shines like silver All the lights are misty in the river In the darkness the trees are full of starlight and all I see is him and me forever and forever And I know it's only in my mind That I'm talking to myself and not to him And although I know that he is blind a way for us I love him but when the night is over he is gone the river's just a river without him the world around me 
strangers. I love him, but every day I'm learning. All my life, I've only been pretending. Without me, his world will go on turning. A world that's full of happiness that I have never known. the Christmas season may be over, we can still always reminisce on the togetherness, warmth, and uniqueness of the time. Family can be a finicky thing, but Asia's take on it is ever-evolving. Watching this evolution unfold before a camera, however, now this could be interesting. Christmas tree is white, all white. The green will clash too horrendously with the decor. The tree is light, the lights are white, all the decorations are white, all the decorations are wrapped in white paper. Mumsy wouldn't have it any other way, and neither would I. She's an artiste. I plan to be an artiste after I make my mill in the stock market. That's how she did it. What a raw model. She buys Barbie dolls and spray paints them gold and sells them for 500 bucks a pop. Can you believe it? What I mean to say is that she reflects on the illusion of female perfection in such a manner that it would be inconceivable to value her magnificent creations within a lower price range. Our tree is artificial. One year Mumsy tried to spray paint a real tree, but for some unknown reason all the needles fell off. We now refer to the dismal years of Black Christmas. We hung black crepe paper all throughout our abode and did not celebrate the traditions of the season in any way. We didn't even exchange the customary tokens of our affection. Oh sure, I really wanted a pair of broader blades that year, but when Mumsy gets into a mood, there's no stopping her. No stopping her at all. Not that I'd want to. Mumsy is a force. A force to be reckoned with. I want to be just like her. When she sets her mind to something, it's impossible to change it. She's a tour de force. Oh yes, occasionally one finds oneself on the other end of that force, but it's for one's good. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Like in the fifth grade when I made a macaroni angel to go on top of the Christmas tree, but she wouldn't let me put it on because she was at war with Folkart. War with Folkart. How do you war against Folkart? I worked really hard on that stupid macaroni angel. I took great pains to paint each individual macaroni. I even did it white, even though everyone in the class was painting their silver and gold, which is what I really wanted to do. But no, it was all for her, and did she appreciate it? No, we have to have the albino tree. What is the point of a white tree and white decorations and white light? You might as well hang a sheet over the thing. I like colour. I'm not afraid to say it. I like red, blue, yellow, chartreuse, goldenrod, emerald, indigo, ginger, and tan. I like colour and I hate the spray painted Barbies. I like colour and I really, really wanted those rollerblades. I like colour. I love colour. I love, love, love it. As I was saying, um, articulating, Christmas, what a bore. For the next performance, we have a small yet amazing group performing a hilarious skit called Touched by an Alien. Here's a bit of information about these alien hunters. Caroline O'Neill plays the captain of this odd group. She's a freshman and is definitely the most qualified person to be the leader. Ava Frederick plays the commander of this fine ship. She's also a freshman at Crofton High School 
being the sensible one that makes her perfect for the role. Olivia Zacharias plays the deranged grunt of the group. She's the crazy freshman of the group, which is exactly what we need for this role. Would you like some tea, Commander? Uh, why, yes, Captain. That would be lovely. Hey! How rude. I'm going for some intelligent life forms. Noted. They do appear to be quite fine. Get on your knees, maggot. Scanning, imaging, oh! What is it? There's a new deal from the Interactive Shopping Network. That face scanner is 50% off. Buy it, we certainly need it. I love this new app. It makes purchasing so much easier. The deals I'm finding are amazing. Which one of you was supposed to be watching the alien? Hey! Get moving! I'm an officer. You're supposed to listen to me. You're like 12. How did you even get in officer training? I was on this colony ship and impressed one of the space explorers with my incredible intelligence. And it doesn't hurt that your father's an admiral. <laughs> Move it! I am so reporting you! Commander's vlog, Spec Date Niner, Aqua Alpha. You so have something in your teeth. Thanks! And you're still recording. Live. Great! So, do you think the aliens are really to sign the Galaxy Confederation Charter? I yeah, always making that happen. Promise me you won't chop off its hand like last time. It's so gross. It worked, didn't it? Hamster's miniature was never so sure. Yeah, but you got goo all over the Wii pad, and it hasn't worked since. I do it the hard way. Hello, good alien. Please sit. Care for some tea? This is gonna take forever. Want me to do the hand thing? The captain here doesn't like that. That's against the Galactic Confederation Code. <laughs> We're a long way from the GCC, cadet. But remember, I have this badge. The GCC is in action. <laughs> Hey! Uh, so, friend, um, what kind of tea do you like? I can generate any number of flavors. Make it extra hot. No torture. Commander! Listen to the captain. I am so transferring after this mission. So, Wild, um, I know none of this means anything to you, but I will simply need your hand. It says you agree to the GCC, and your credit and all the resources will belong to us in return. You will get a shiny new GCC badge. Each one is uniquely engraved with an unduplicated number and a holographic image of ours of
No souvenirs. Gross! No. <sighs> hey, what are you? Oh, that feels kind of good. Thank you. That was so different. Quite. I think your eyes are slightly different color now. Yeah, and I can see better too. This requires further study. We'll report to the CDC and get authorized for a return mission. To the shuttle? To the shuttle. I'm totally asking for a transfer. I didn't get to kill anything. Cadet behind? I call for a rescue mission. But we don't have any funds. Well, if the lovely viewers want to visit the link in the description, they could add to our funds to help save Reagan, our local theater cadet. Great idea. I'd love to click the link too. Well, on to the next amazing performance. Time Stops is a vocal duet from the musical Big Fish between ninth grade students Lucy Dennis and Jackson Smith. Lucy has been doing musical theater since she was in the first grade, and Jackson has been doing musical theater since he was in the sixth grade. Lucy and Jackson played Bella in the Beast and Crofton Middle School's performance of Beauty and the Beast before it was postponed due to the coronavirus. So for them, this is their first performance together for the public. Lucy and Jackson, hope you enjoy. Try to 
This next performance features two amazingly talented and extraordinarily humbled actors. Us. Co-starring in this scene are Sarah Ator and Claire Higgins. You might be wondering, what exactly is this little performance of ours? Well, we're here to tell you. It's a Zoom seminar about how to survive the apocalypse. Ringing any bells? Well, if you couldn't guess the obvious answer, we're talking about the skills necessary to survive a gremlin outbreak. It's the only possible answer. I mean, has there been an outbreak of something else recently? Hmm, good question. All right. Welcome to our webinar. Today we are here to discuss survival skills. What will we do if faced with an uncontrollable threat? Werewolves? Vampires? Teachers? Close, but no. We're gonna talk about zombies. Man, I am sick of hearing about zombie attacks. How cliche. Zombies aren't that difficult to deal with. They move like two miles an hour. You just kind of step out of the way when they're coming. Vampires are the scary ones. They can move with lightning speed and sneak right up on you. It's so exciting. Miss Paula, I think you're incorrect. The scary ones are fathers when you haven't plowed the fields before supper. Jebediah, no one cares about your old world. Anyways, werewolves are way cooler. Think of all that power. Fine, then. We'll talk about... Oh, I know. Um, we'll talk about gremlins. Gremlins? Gremlins? Do you mean Tom? Uh, that's right. I'm the best gremlin out here. More like the stupidest one. Have there been gremlin outbreaks? A few in Chicago. How come that wasn't on the news? What is this news? thing you talk about. <laughs> Jebediah, the news is something on the magic screen. You get to watch information. In regards to the gremlin outbreak, it was very hush-hush. They don't want people to panic. Oh, oh yes, the magic screen. Wow, gremlins, they're nasty little creatures. Wait, does Jebediah not know what a TV is? He lived under a literal rock before he got here. What do you think? Wait, what are gremlins again? They're these little snobs that are really hard to get rid of. Kind of like Paula. I don't think... Uh, don't forget, they're a complete mess. Just like Tom. Okay, moving on. Let's get talking about survival techniques related to gremlins. A vampire can outrun a gremlin, though. So could a werewolf. So can my father when he has the belt. Jebediah, I'm just slightly concerned for you. Right, focus people. First of all, I want everyone to check their security cameras. Make sure you have good coverage at all your entrances. One missed angle a corner gives gremlins a chance to slip through. Vampires are very good at doing that. A werewolf would just rip the camera off the wall. An angry father could just whip the wall in half. Next, you'll want to improve your lighting. Don't allow for any dark corners where gremlins could lurk. They love the shadows. Vampires do too. 
Werewolves are so big, they make their own shadows. I, too, am experienced with the dark corners of shame. Okay, next, um, install panic buttons on your computer keyboard or under desks. You need to be able to alert our security forces as quickly as possible. Oftentimes, there is no, there is no time for a text or phone call, so the panic buttons will allow for a quick response. Tom, I need a panic button whenever Tom opens his mouth. Uh -huh. ah. Unless it's zombies. You'd have a good hour before they made it through the door and down the hallway. They still probably walk faster than the speed at which Tom thinks. Now that's very accurate. Hey, no it is not. Uh-huh. Remlins are quick. They won't give you a moment to think twice about what you do. You have to prepare and train because any hesitation will put you in danger. Drill your staff on what to do, and practice, practice, practice. You want their reactions to be second nature. Otherwise, they panic, and you lose them to the other side. Um, huh. I have a cousin who's a vampire now. I wouldn't brag about that. I think Paula just exposed her family of being vampires. Hmm, well, too bad. I think it's funny. You want your staff to be aware of all your escape routes. It's best to get as many people out as possible, out of the area so the security team can move in and eliminate the threat without potential casualties getting in the line of fire. Um, but gremlins are fast. How can we outrun them? You don't. If you can't escape safely, then hide. Shelter in place. You need to have sa de designated safe areas for hiding during a threat where you can take shelter until the threats are eliminated. Gremlins are light and motion sensitive. They go after anything that moves. Your best defense is to hide in a dark room that you can lock. Lock the door, close the blinds. If the door doesn't lock, then blockade it with heavy furniture. Keep your cell phones off. The light will attract them. Vampires hate the light. I bet you could blind one with your cell phone. If you're certain you won't be detected, then contact our security forces to give them the location of the gremlin infestation, the approximate number of gremlins, the potential victims in the area, details, details, details. The more we know about our enemy, the better prepared we can be. Be prepared. That's my motto. Oh, you made that up yourself, did you? Yep. Wow, you're so clever and original. Thank you. Wow, that's a very nice motto, Tom. What should my motto be? How about always a clueless rock? I feel like that's an insult, but I do not know. I will take that as a compliment. Thank you, Tom. Anyways, moving on. When our security team arrives, stay calm and show them your hands. The hands are the key to anyone who is infected by gremlins. What happens if you are infected? Oh, you don't want to know. Huh, maybe I do want to know. It ain't pretty. Indeed, it's not pretty. You'll end up looking like Tom. Huh. Oh, the horror. Excuse me, but I am the opposite of not pretty. I am the prettiest of all the pretties. If you're infested, you'll have gremlins growing inside of you. When they fully mature... Oh, uh, here it comes. Oh. They eat their way out. <laughs> I'm sorry I asked. I told you so. Oh my, uh, that sounds horrible. So, keep your hands free and leave behind all of your belongings. We don't need gremlins sneaking out in your bags or purses. Uh, what if you have a designer purse? Leave it. Um, even if it's really expensive? Especially if it's really expensive. Yes, yes. Leave it behind so I may add it to my collection of things. <laughs> How about now? Avoid sudden movements. Security forces will react to any quick motions. Gremlins are fast and require lightning reflexes, so stay calm and move slowly around security. And don't be a screamer. <coughs> Paula. 
Huh, huh, don't look at me. That will attract the gremlins and make security's job harder. What if you're stuck for a long time in your shelter? You should have water stored in your shelters, one gallon per person a day, and don't throw water on the gremlins. It's not pretty. Uh, is it true you can throw water on witches, though? Yes, it is. Oh, uh, let me write that down. Gremlins, no. Witches, yes. So, if I throw water on Paul, will she melt? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> Why don't you test that theory on your own time? Anyways, store at least a three-day supply of non-perishable food, the approximate time it takes for a complete gremlin cleanup. Most other creatures can be cleaned up after three days or less. Uh, what's the quickest creature to clean up after? Ghosts. Actually, ghosts can be pretty messy if they're ectoplasmic. Good point. That's why you're the expert. Stop brown nosing. Huh, uh, you know what, Tom? I could fall down a flight of stairs and still land higher than your academic level. I keep hearing this academic level talk. But I have no idea what it means. Oh, Jebediah, you're probably only in the first one. So don't worry about it. Well, that's still higher than yours, Tom. All right, focus, focus. Anyways, a whistle is handy in your emergency kit. In case you're trapped and need to get security's attention. What about a wolf whistle? They're kind of like dog whistles. They hurt werewolves' ears. They hate them. Isn't a wolf whistle what a boy werewolf does if he sees a cute girl werewolf? Oh, you know, Tom kind of acts like a werewolf with all that yapping. Huh, uh, that's because he is one. Very funny. I thought so. Also, why are you always talking about vampires? Uh, maybe because I am one. Ah! Uh! I, I was just kidding. Ah! Ah! American culture seems very fascinating. I think I'll join in. Ah! Leave me alone! Anyways, that concludes our webinar. Stay safe, everyone, and don't uh. get the coronavirus. Uh. You can all log off now. <laughs>
tigers come at night with their voices soft as thunder I say tear your hope apart I say turn your dream to shame Both Carly and Riley have been performing together in theater for many years. Carly has been doing dance for 14 years and voice lessons for five years. Riley has been doing dance for three years and voice lessons for seven years. In this scene, Carly Sanders and Riley Douglas portray Meg and Christine from Phantom of the Opera. As Christine confesses that she believes her voice coach is an angel, Meg thinks that Christine is going a bit crazy. They're very excited for everyone to see their performance of Angel of Music. like this can come true. Christine, you're talking in riddles, and it's not like you. Angel of music, guide and guardian, grant to me your glory. Who is this angel? Oh, 
Christine, it's white. It frightens me. Don't be frightened. Hello, my name is Megan Howarth. I'm in the ninth grade, and this is my performance of When He Sees Me from the musical Waitress. the waiter by his first name or read Oreos, but eat the cookie before the cream, but what scares me the most, what scares me the most, is what if when he sees me, what if he doesn't like it, what if he runs the other way and I can't hide from it, what happens then? So I'm just fine inside my shell shaped mind. This way I get the best view. So that when he sees me, I want him to. And I'm not defensive. I'm simply being cautious. I can risk reckless dating due to my miscalculating wild. A certain suitor stands in line. I see him in movies. Newspaper television. You cannot be too careful when it comes to sharing your life. Could end up on this rubble line. Oh, sorry, girls, but he could be criminal. Some sort of psychopath who escaped from an institution somewhere where they don't have girls. He could have masterminded some way to find me. He could be colorblind. How untrustworthy is that? He could be less than kind. Or even worse, he could be very nice, have lovely eyes, and make me laugh, come out of hiding. What do I do with that? Oh God, what if when he sees me, I like him and he knows it? What if he opens up a door and I can't close it? What happens then? I'm not prepared for that. I'm scared of breaking open. But still, I can't help but hoping to find someone to talk to who likes the way I am. Someone who Douglas, a sophomore at Crofton High School, will be singing Audition the Fools Who Dream from La La Land. Riley portrays Mia, an aspiring actress, as she auditions for the movie that could change the course of her entire life if she gets the part. Through the song, Mia shows how the dreamers are the people who have the potential to truly change the world. Barefoot, and she smiled, leapt without looking, and tumbled into the sea. The water was freezing, she spent a month sneezing, but said she would do it. Here 
She believes that this song is very true to what we're going through right now. Although it may seem like things are getting better, we're still having to be separated from most of our friends and family. So most of us are having to learn to be more independent and not rely on others to make the first move for you. All we can do is take things one day at a time and hope nothing turns out too bad. Here's Maddie singing Next Right Thing from Frozen 2. I've seen dark before, but not like this. This is cold, this is empty, this is numb. The life I knew is over, the lights are out. Hello darkness, I'm ready to succumb. I follow you, Lord. I always have, but you've gone to a place I cannot find. This grief has a gravity it pulls me down. But a tiny voice whispers in my mind. Can 
gonna be a day beyond this night. I don't know anymore what is true. I can't find my direction. I'm all alone. The only star that guided me was you. Porter is a freshman, and tonight she'll be singing Part of Your World from The Little Mermaid. It's a pretty well-known song, but in case you don't know, it's about Ariel, who is a mermaid who falls in love with a human. She badly wants to be with him, so the song is all about her longing to be human and part of your world. She hopes you enjoy. Land, 
next is, again, Anna Porter, who will be performing a scene from the musical Little Women with Kira Tilton. Kira and Anna met in third grade when they were playing lacrosse together and are so excited to be doing this scene together now. This scene takes place at a beach in Cape Cod and is between Beth and Joe. Joe just came back from New York because Beth is sick again with scarlet fever. Even though the scene is short, it plays a very important part in the story. Hopefully this scene moves you as much as it moved us. Look what I bought. A kite for my Beth. Look at the tail. I told the man I wanted all the colors of the rainbow for my sister. That's the most beautiful kite I've ever seen. Oh, Beth, this is a dream come true. Come out of the chair. Help me put this kite together. Tell me about New York. It's a circus. <laughs> a circus? Clowns, waltzing camels, dancing horses. Sometimes you see them right out there on the street. And museums and theater. Beth everywhere. And the women, are they shameless? Some of them anyways. It's an amazing place, Beth. I'm gonna take you there. To New York? And we'll dine in the best restaurants and see Shakespeare and ride the omnibus and mingle with unsavory characters. Joe, I have something for you. If you put it up to your ear, it, it talks to you. What does it say? We grow up too fast. You're a woman of the world now, and I'm so proud of you, Joe. When you were first born, not even an hour old, I told Marmee, Beth is mine. <laughs> Everyone has someone special in this world, and I have you. Can I tell you a secret? Anything. I never made plans about what I would do when I grew up, and I'm not afraid to die. The hardest part is leaving you. I won't let it happen. You'll get better. You will. This next performance is a song performed by Caroline O'Neill called My Grand Plan. It comes from the musical based off the famous Percy Jackson series called The Lightning Thief. This song is performed by the character Annabelle when she is expressed to her personal life struggles to Percy and how sexism and parental neglect have shaped her attitudes towards life, thus driving her goal to be successful in spite of everyone who's trodden on her. We know you'll love this amazing performance. You know what only gift my mom ever gave me? A hat. It makes you invisible. You put it on and no one can see you. And appropriate. I've always been a smart girl. Always made the grade, always got the gold star. I've always been a smart girl. A smart girl only gets a girl so far. You win at every single game. You want a quest, they tell you tough. If you don't go, you'll never know if you'll be ever good enough. My grand plan is that I will be remembered. My grand plan, just you wait and see. You better wise up, so rise up. Bring on any challenge, and someday soon someone will notice me. always been a tough girl always been the one not to run from a fight always been a tough girl because most girls never win if they're polite so me i tend to stand my ground i find i never can give in it may not be my quest but maybe it's mine to win my grand plan is that i will be Up. 
clan and I will bear them for and I will be great. Just wait and see. You better rise up, cause I'll rise up. Bring on any challenge. And someday soon, I swear, I don't know how or when, but I promise you, I'll never be invisible again. Someone will notice. I've always been a smart girl. Are you ready for an excellent skit, Regan? As long as you don't chicken out, Caitlin. I am feeling a bit peckish. Maybe I'll go get some food. Okay, I can introduce a skit to our guests. Everyone has that one friend that takes things way too literally. One friend tries to tell a simple joke, and each time the other friend tries to elaborate more and more, and it becomes crazier and crazier. All right, I'm back. Let's hope this show is all it's cracked up to be. And make sure to please donate. Did you see the news? No, what? A bunch of chickens escaped a farm and they're all over 424. Hey, I know a joke about chickens. Oh yeah? Why did the chicken cross the road? <laughs> Do you mean for what purpose did the chicken cross the road? Yes. Oh, okay. So, for what purpose did the chicken cross the road? Are we talking about one of us who's afraid of a bully or an actual chicken? <laughs> an actual bird brain. <laughs> so you? Ha ha. No. A feathered, two-legged, egg-creating, winged creature. Oh, a gals gals domesticus. A what? The scientific name for a chicken. Oh, then yes, a gal gal domestic thing. <laughs> gals gals domesticus. Gallus gallus domesticus. Perfect. Okay, then. What? So, for what purpose did the Gals Gals Domesticus cross the road? Oh, right. In what sense cross? Eh? Well, did they upset it, step on its toe, or steal some money? What are you talking about? In what way did they make the road cross? No, no. When to cross? From one side to the other. Oh, perish in it. What? Deck use it. Are you speaking English? Yes, of course. How about traverse? Yes, that's it. Traverse from one side to the other. Ah, now I get it. So... So... Don't make me say it again. Oh, for what purpose did the Gauss Gauss Domesticus traverse the road? Yes, that's it. Ah, but... No, but... What do you mean, road? Everyone knows roads. The things people drive on with cars or lorries or buses or... Wait, you've got me doing it now. Doing it? What? It doesn't matter. Back to road. What don't you understand about road? Well, I can assume you meant asphalt highway. Yes. But... I said no buts. What if it's aspirational, like dreams or desires? I don't know what you're talking about. You know, the road to El Dorado. Where? El Dorado, the city of gold. Oh, but what's that got to do with... There is no actual city. The road to El Dorado is a metaphor for our path through life to achieve enlightenment. Okay, in fact, I can't say anything because I don't even know where we are. <laughs> the road, an asphalt highway or higher extension. Don't finish that sentence. An asphalt highway. <laughs> Thank you for clearing that up. No problem. So? So what? So, for what purpose did the Gals Gals Domesticus traverse the asphalt highway? Hmm. I do not know. To get to the other side. <laughs> the other side. 
the ethereal plane or the juxtaposed of where they set forth. What? Oh, what now? Well, are they looking to move on to a life beyond our mortal existence? What? Are they looking to end their life, die, and then move on to the ethereal plane or heaven? You know, the other side. Mm, I don't know. Or the exact opposite of where their journey began, from one edge of the asphalt highway to the other edge. Mm, I think the second one, but now I don't know. Well, I think you should find out before you start asking me questions. I wasn't asking you a question. Look, it's a classic joke. Why did the chicken cross the road? You mean, for what purpose did the gas gas mess traverse the asphalt highway? To get to the other side. <laughs> you mean to reach the ethereal plane? No. Or to reach the juxtaposed position from which they began? No! Well, if you're going to tell a joke, at least tell it properly. Wow, that was an amazing inaugural performance of the Cardinal Players. Woo! And hey, now that we're in real life, we can tell you just how much we enjoyed it. But before we do, there are a few incredible people that we have to thank. The first of which being Miss Bittman, the head of the Cardinal Players. Without her, this thing wouldn't have run as smoothly or as safely as it did. So a very big thank you. Second up, we have Miss Connolly, our amazing theater teacher who ensured our acting was spot on. Also, Mr. Smith, who gave us his advice throughout this whole process and never left us behind, even though I'm sure it was sometimes very tempting. Hey, we can't forget about Mr. Dempsey, who somehow managed to oversee all this craziness. But we are forgetting somebody very special. Who might that be? The Crofton High School security guards! Oh, you're right! They somehow did not kick us out when we showed up here unannounced to film this thing, and so we are eternally grateful to them. But we're also eternally grateful to you, our audience, because without you guys, we wouldn't have had anyone to perform this for. And that would have made me very sad. Poor Chase. Oh, well, while we have your attention, we can't forget about shamelessly plugging our donation link down below in the description. Click it, donate any amount you'd like to support our future endeavors. Keep in mind, this theater company is brand spanking new and baby, we are flat broke! Before we leave you, we'd also like to thank our performers and without them, we just wouldn't have a show. You're right, they did such an amazing job, but I'm Chase Nestor. And I'm Alex Hassenkale. And from all of us to all of you, we'll meet again. No, 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 no. Goodbye. Some cars. The sun is out. Sun is shining. That's some wet, wet, wet. No, there ain't a car. Don't shut up. Hey, bum, 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 bum. I'm so long. All right, let's do it. Okay. Hmm. Have I forgotten my lines? We'll find out. We'll find out. We'll find out. There's a few people we have to thank. Oh yeah, some very important people. Oh, and the audience. You know, we could have kept going, that would have been fine. I know, but it's funny anyways. Oh!